is your name, please? My name is Ernie Richardson. My name is Ernie Richardson. My name is Ernie Richardson. Only one of these people is the real Ernie Richardson. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Kitty Carlisle, Don Amici, and Polly Bergen. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and thank you very much. And welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo, and Helene Curtis Spray Nut. Regular and super soft. Panel, will you please open up your envelopes for the first time tonight and take out the affidavit cards and follow along as I read. I, Ernie Richardson, am a Canadian who has become an expert at the old Scottish winter sport of curling. While the terminology of curling might be confusing, the game itself is simple. In curling, a player stands at the hack and slides a 42-pound stone along 138 feet of ice. His object is to land his rock with the aid of his sweepers on the button in the center of the house. A game usually consists of 10 ends. A rink consists of four players. I am the skip of my rink. At the international bond spiel in Scotland last March, we became the curling champions of the world. Signed, Ernie Richardson. I give up. Who you, is it? You give up no, I give on. up. I mean, Boy. you know. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, that proves you, uh, you certainly weren't confused by the game, which I explained very simply to you. That's These true. three gentlemen all claiming to be Ernie Richardson, skip of the world's champion curling team, and let's begin this first round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you. Well, if you think you've confused me, you have. <laughs> one of the things that I'd like to ask, number one, is you say this is a Scottish game. I've seen it played in Switzerland, and the term Bonspiel has a kind of Swiss, German, French thing. Why are these terms in here? Well, it is... Uh, uh, way back it was Dutch, apparently, ah. but, uh, and this would uh, account now, for having, the two tonic thank you. back. Having seen the game, I know that you shove that pot you're carrying down the ice, and then you sweep like mad in front of it. Why? Number two, I'm so sorry. This is to uh, aid the stone to get to your target. Get Number to three, why do you sweep in front of it? To uh, keep the surface of the ice clean. Would so it deflect it even if there was a little snow on it? Sometimes the ace is a little frosty. Don? Well, uh, I want to warn these gentlemen that my knowledge of this game is limitless, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything I ah. ask, I'm not to be held, it's not to be held against me, believe me. I know absolutely nothing about this. I saw a picture in the paper, I believe, was it recently uh, to do with this curling business? Was that in the paper recently? There have been pictures recently, uh, was yes. it a pic Probably was a picture of uh, whoever is uh, Mr. Uh, Richardson here. Tell me a little bit about the game, will you, number one, please? What, uh, uh, what, 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 does the condition of the ice uh, 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 have anything to do with how fast this uh, thing you uh, send down the, uh, the line goes? Stone? Well, yes. Uh, <coughs> actually, if you can judge the condition of the ice, you can throw the stone the right way, and that's the object. Uh, half of the game is judging the ice better than your opponent's. Half of the game is that. Well, the winning half. Uh, tell me something. Do you can you push another stone out of the way with your own stone going down? Still number one. So uh, well, num number two. Yes, that's one of the objects. That's one of the objects. Right. Polly. Well, in other words, this is shuffleboard played with a rock on ice. <laughs> Number three, would that be sort of like a, a general, I mean, of course, it's Yes, it's something like shuffleboard, yes. It is similar to shuffleboard. You hit, in other words, you must, it would be good to hit another rock in front of you, right? Out of play, yes. Uh, now, uh, number two, how many, uh, do you get a certain number of chances to, uh, uh, tries to get the rock from where you are into the house, or, or is it just the first person who gets there wins? No, the, you have eight stones per team. Eight stones per team. Right. I see. Tom? Uh, uh, Ernie Richardson, number two. Can you tell me when 
uh, Bill McDonald stop being the captain of the Glasgow team? No. Can you tell me number three? No. <laughs> no? When was, number one, when did Bill McDonald stop being the captain of the Glasgow team? I don't know. Number three, can you tell me what the term north of steel means? No. Do you know number two, north of steel? No. Number one, do you happen to know? No. Uh, number one, maybe you could tell me which coast of Scotland Glasgow is on. It's on the west coast. Can you tell me what... Probably can, but we haven't time for it, I'm sorry to say, because our stone has landed on the button and is in the house, and we have to proceed with balloting. So will you kindly mark your ballots, if you will, please? Without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Remember, of course, that it's up to you with your vast knowledge of curling now to uncover the, the real one. Tom, which one did you I don't, vote? I don't have a... I, I haven't voted for oh, anyone sorry, yet. I thought you had. Uh, but I... Sorry. It's just a... Uh, I just have to be a complete guess, I guess. I'll take number two. I couldn't get any information out of anyone. Anyway. Kitty? I didn't have any. I voted for number three because when he said sometimes the ice gets a little frosty, there was an intention and a kind of uh, force behind what he said that made me feel he cared deeply about curling. <laughs> Don, what about your vote? I voted for number one, bud, because. <laughs> <laughs> Forthright and to the point. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Polly, your vote, please. I voted for number three. I guess the, the women are sticking together tonight. <laughs> Actually, um, for two reasons. Number one, the way he said no, which was very Scottish, I thought. And number um, two, because he was the only one who said a Richardson. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did. He sort of yes, he did. Yeah. away yes, he did. though he right. said it for years, which probably means that he just didn't know how to pronounce it correctly. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought in the beginning. Yeah, so I... Everyone tells me it's the way they say their name. All righty, even if it isn't Richardson. Well, anyway, we've got our votes in and our minds made up, and if you're playing along at home, as we always express the hope that you are, then let's see how close you come to the truth with us as we find out which one of these gentlemen is the skip of the world's champion curling team. The Willa Rio. Ernie Richardson, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. And the ladies had it. They had the word for it this time. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Carol Bjornsson. I'm representative for Hilmar Rexton, a Norwegian ship owner. I've never seen a curling <laughs> match in my life. <laughs> well, you can never tell that from the way you handle yourself, both you and number two. Would you tell us your real name, sir, what you do? My name is Stanley Owen, and I'm a captain in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> We thank you, gentlemen. In checking the score, we find there were exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Helene Curtis and, of course, a gift package of fine beauty products from Helene Curtis for your ladies. Thank you very much for being with us. Happy curling. Good night. Good night. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jane Rosenthal. My name is Jane Rosenthal. My name is Jane Rosenthal. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this next affidavit? I, Jane Rosenthal, am a museum curator and field archaeologist. Although my specialty is the ancient art of the Americas, I have explored ruins in the Middle East, where I also dug for remains of the Neanderthal man. Last year, I was awarded a fellowship which enabled me to start my own explorations in southern Mexico. Signed, Jane Rosenthal. Thank you. I know a Jean Rosenthal, a very talented lady. Miss Rosenthal, number three, can you tell me what is a, a, a cenote or cenote? I'm sorry, I don't know. It's C-E-N-O-T-E. I may not be pronouncing it right. Do you know number two? Cenote no, or cenote? Know. You know number one. Uh, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Could be a hundred dollar bill. A C note? A C note. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you tell me, number three, who discovered the city of Troy? Dr. Schliemann. Number two, can you tell me the name of the famous gate he unearthed? 
Uh, Dr. Hank Seaman, um, oh, no, I don't. I Do you remember number one? The gate of the, um, no, I don't know. No, I don't. <laughs> Could you tell me who, number one, who uh, built the city of Xochitl? Or do you know what I'm talking about? I may be pronouncing that wrong, too. In, in Babylonia? In Babylonia? Well, I'm really pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, you like Mexico in mind? Yes, but I, I probably have pronounced it. Kitty. They breed them awful pretty in archaeology, I'll say that. <laughs> you do. Number one, uh, where... did you where, these up, but... Where was... <laughs> <laughs> Number one, where was the Piltdown man found? It was found in England. Uh, number two, was he bogus or real? He was proved, uh, disproved, rather. Number three, there are famous Roman ruins that have been dug up in Libya. Do you know the name of the town where they are? No, I don't. Number four, one, what do they call uh, Quetzalcoatl in Mexico? It's the name of a deity. A deity. Number two, do you know what kind of a deity? It's a serpent god. The one. Don, a, a serpent, serpent god. god. Uh, number two, uh, uh, you're a curator of what museum? The Virginia Museum of Fine Art. And number three? The Delgado Museum in New Orleans. And number one? The Brooklyn Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Don, if nothing, we uh, give you variety. Yes, indeed, yes, okay. I got all that. Uh, number uh, three, how large is the French Quarter in New Orleans? It's uh, three or four blocks. Three or four blocks mm -hmm. wide and about how many deep, would you say? About ten blocks. Yeah. Uh, number uh, uh, two, what kind of a fellowship did you get? It was the Ford Foundation Fellowship, a Ford? grant, yes. Ford. And number one, how much did this uh, fellowship pay you? $2,500. $2,500, yes, thank Polly? you. Thank you, bud. Number three, who is Louis Cutlow? Pardon me? Louis Cutlow. I don't know the name. Number one, do you know? No, I don't. Number two, do you know? No, I don't. A very, very famous uh, southern Mexican explorer, uh, exploring South America and such. Uh, he brought back, I think, the first shrunken head or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, they didn't dig those bones and know those things. But they didn't dig those heads um, up. Oh, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, what is a, uh, now my, my uh, pronunciation may be wrong, what is a, a Yeti, a Y-E-T-I? Are you, um, I think you're speaking of the Mexican uh, sort of uh, a bead that they found in the room. Number three, could you tell me what is a Yeti? Not Yeti, she can't, because... Oh, I only got one question. I'm sorry. I wish you'd stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know myself, what is a Yeti? You <laughs> a Yeti is, a, is the, uh, the, la, the uh, Tibetan word for the, the abdomin, um, abominable... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, sure. Okay. Oh, dear. You know, that was the Yeti. That was the Yeti that they heard looking over the snowbank at some explorers coming up at uh, Mount Everest, you know, and one Yeti said to another, here comes some more of those abominable mountain climbers. Oh, All right, God. it's time to uh, ballot, if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like for you to meet the real Jane Rosenstein. <laughs> <laughs> will you please mark your ballot well, without, consulta you without consultation. <laughs> Vote for All number right. one. Number two, right. or number three. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Tom, you all Mark? I tell you, I can't, I just can't, uh, I don't even know why I voted this way. No, I didn't. Well, I voted for vote. M. No, I am. For M. I don't know why I did that. Number three, was it? Number three, yes. All right, Kitty? I voted for number two. Um, number one didn't um, uh, answer one of my questions correctly. I think about the plume serpent, Quetzalcoatl. Number two said the Piltdown man was bogus, but I didn't ask number three. And she had some very good answers for Tom, but I still yeah, think it's number two. Don? I voted for number two because she didn't know what Yeti was. <laughs> <laughs> and number one knew what Sancho was. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> Polly, you're wonderful. <laughs> Polly, your vote, please. 
Well, they were the only two things I knew about. I can't help it if they didn't know them. I knew them. I, I voted for number three. Uh, number two offered an awful lot of extra information, like the first name of that doctor. That always, when they start offering information, Watch I get it, a little... Yeah. Uh, Don't give anything you know, away. No, you know, they try too hard not to be guessed. And number three, uh, also number two didn't uh, uh, know what a Yeti is, though I probably got it so messed up with pronunciation. Number one was terribly bright, and I think we all made a mistake not voting for it. All right, let's find out if we made a mistake or not by asking right now the real Jane Rosenthal to please stand up. <laughs> you fooled the panel 100%. Congratulations to you all. And of course, uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm Greta Gee, and I'm with the Institute of International Education here in New York. Thank you. And number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Deanne Barkley, and I, I work on the production staff of the television show, I've Got a Secret. <laughs> <laughs> and without any qualms at all, four incorrect votes, $250 each, $1,000 for you pretty ladies. That should do a lot of digging, I would say. And of course, the gift package of fine beauty products from Helene Curtis. Thank you so much for being with us. Good digging to you. Good night and God bless you. And now may I introduce our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Professor Maynard Amarin. My name is Professor Maynard Amarin. My name is Professor Maynard Amarin. Again, follow along, panel, will you? I, Professor Maynard Amarin, am the chairman of the Department of Grape Culture and Winemaking at the University of California. California is the only university in the world to give a degree with a specialization in winemaking. We maintain our own vineyards in which we grow some 2,000 varieties of grapes. In our own winery, we make five to 10,000 gallons of wine of 200 different types, for research purposes only. I also teach an adult course in the principles of wine appreciation. One of the tests during this course involves identifying wines by taste. This course is closed to undergraduates. Signed, Maynard Amory. Here we have three gentlemen, each claiming to be Maynard Amorine, professor of viticulture and enology. And we'll start this round with Polly Bergen, our expert in these subjects. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Number three. Um, where is the University of California? <laughs> Besides being in California, I mean. The particular branch of the university that I'm connected with, I assume you mean, is yes. the University of California at Davis. At Davis, I see. Number two. Number two. Where's Davis? <laughs> <laughs> Davis is about 70 miles east and slightly north of San Francisco. Number one, is that where Davis is? Well, it's also 10 miles from Sacramento. <laughs> that, that puts it right on the spot <laughs> for me. Tom Poston, please. I just knew something about wine. Let I... me ask, uh, you know, I heard about this, uh, this uh, branch of the education. They did a lot of things out there. They crossed uh, an elephant with a, a centipede, you know. <laughs> That's right, and, and they that. said, we don't know what we got, but when that thing starts stomping grapes, look out. <laughs> That's courtesy of Bob Arbogast, who, who lives out that way. What is a cuvee number two, please? Uh, this is a blend of wines for making a champagne. Number two, maybe you could also tell us what is a uh, saumur? I may not be pronouncing that right, but it's a Mexican god. No, <laughs> no, no, no. So, so mu, S A U M U R. I don't know. Do you know number one? No. Number three, please. So mu. So mu is a wine near Cancy. I'm sorry. What near? Cancy. Q U I N C Y. It's a district near Cancy in the Loire. Kitty. Thank you. That's about twenty miles from Davis. <laughs> Ten miles well, south ten of miles Blanchard. From Blanchard. Yes, <laughs> thank Number you. three, when you taste various wines, what do you clean your mouth with between each tasting? 
you don't clean your mouth after tasting wine. You get them all mixed up then, you don't do no one from the other. Number two, what do you clean your mouth with? Well, you use a little bit of the next wine after the first one. <laughs> Now you know, <laughs> Kitty, now you know why the course is closed to undergraduates. <laughs> In France, we use other things. Uh, number one, how do you trick brandy? By adding a ferment and sugar. Number two, three, how do you trick... Uh, number three, how big is Don. the Romany... Uh, excuse me, thank you, uh, <laughs> but Number three, how big is the Romany Conti vineyard? They bottle less than... About how many acres, would you say? Oh. You don't have acres in France. You have hectares. Yeah. Uh, number uh, uh, two, <laughs> what is the uh, proper combination for the best wine? Of what? Combination of what? Well, uh, it must look good and smell good and taste. No, no, I mean that goes into the make... Oh, yeah, I, I don't understand your question. Well, we might not have had much time, but we've had a lot of laughs and learned a lot of things tonight. Is it possible I, I could be Jane proper, Rosenthal and Professor Maynard? You and could be, and we'll find out in a moment oh, or two. May I ask you to mark your ballots, please, without consultation, as before. Please vote for number one, number two, or number three. Tell me when you're ready. You mark, Tom? Oh, wait, wait. Holly, Tom, have you marked your ballot? Yes, I have to have marked my ballot. I voted for number three because he knew what Somio was. And Kitty? Well, I voted for number one because I didn't think he did know what Somio was. I thought Somio was some kind of a military academy. Uh, number one said that you trick brandy with fermentation, which I don't think is true. I think it's tea and a little caramel or sugar, but he did say sugar. And uh, number two might be the one. Don? <laughs> I voted for number one because I didn't get a chance to ask him anything. <laughs> Polly, your vote. Well, uh, may I just establish one thing? Is the real person allowed to mispronounce their name? No, I would say because not. Because number two mispronounced his name. He did? Yes, he, he, he called himself Professor Maynard Ammer Mean. Yes. Uh, and if that's, uh, if that's usable, then I quit. <laughs> because of that, I voted for number one, and I also voted for him because I didn't ask him any questions, and I asked two and three, and I didn't like their answers. <laughs> All right, let's find out whether answers are good or bad, and whether guessing is good and bad as voting. As we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real university professor, wine expert. So will the real Maynard Amarine please stand up? pronounced his name, I'm sure it was only a slip of the tongue and nothing more. It was certainly not a deliberate thing. Thank you very much, sir. Number one, you tell us your real name and what you really do. My name is Tom Lazor, and I'm an account executive at Sugner & Hennessy, an advertising agency. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you really do, please. My real name is William Lawrence Sloan. I'm a photographer's representative and president of Cheese Unlimited, the house of 400 cheeses. <laughs> You fooled the panel 100%. That means, of course, four incorrect votes are $250 each for a grand total of $1,000, or one grand, as you ever want to call it. And, of course, a gift package of fine beauty products from Helene Curtis for your ladies. Thanks so much for being with us. Good night and happy wine tasting. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. There'll be many a post-mortem after the show is off the air, I'm sure. It's a rather sad occasion because we must say goodbye to two of our dear panelists. Kitty Carlisle is going away for a vacation, and I hope it's a wonderful one. Thank you, bud. And uh, Don Amici is going on the road with uh, 13 Daughters, his new musical show. And I want to say goodbye and best wishes to both of you. Have a wonderful time and much success. Thank you very much, bud. Uh, we will have replacing Kitty, uh, Miss Faye Emerson, and uh, Mr. Ralph Bellamy will be in your place, ah, Don. good, good, good. I'm glad. Well, good luck to you all. Have a wonderful week. Good night, panel. Hi, Brian. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. Tell the
truth has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of end and dandruff treatment shampoos and Helene Curtis spray nut, regular and super soft. Johnny Olson saying good night from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded. <laughs>